Hey guys, today I want to show you how to build this fun little feature for your store. It's a sales counter. It lists how many times the product has been purchased. And I think it's great for conversions. It's great for social proof. I got the idea actually from Gumroad, which is where I used to sell my digital products. As you can see, 201 sales. But in the beginning, I didn't have any reviews, right? As you can see, 201 sales, but 25 reviews. So probably like one in 10 people leave a review. And in the beginning, when you're a new store, this is really great. It shows that the store is operational, that you are actually in business, that the store isn't dead and encourages customers, right? And you can set this up completely for free. You don't even need to write any code. You don't need to be a developer, okay? All we're gonna really be doing is using the Shopify Flow app. If you don't know this, it's, it's free. It's the official automation uh, tool from Shopify. So when something happens, you can create a flow that that works automatically, right? That does things. And what we want to do is whenever there's an order, we're going to update a meta field on our product page. We're going to set up this meta field that stores this number, the sale count. And when there's an order, that's going to turn into 48, right? And then to display that stuff, we'll use a custom liquid field with this code that you can copy and paste from my blog post. So step one, let us set up our meta field first. So in your store, go to settings, and then custom data and go to products. And we're just gonna set up add definition, right? And set up a meta field called sale count. And this is going to give you a default namespace and key of custom dot sale underscore count. Remember this, okay? Because we're gonna be using this later to output that number. And the type, it's gonna be a number, an integer, right? A full number and just one value, it's, it's only holding one number. If you want, you can write a description here, like what this meta field is for, and perhaps a link to this video in case you need to jog your memory about what it does, okay? And uh, make sure you got read access on the storefront. Save. Now we've got the meta field. Now when you go into any of your products, let's go into the complete snowboard, scroll down, you should be able to see this meta field, the sale count. Okay, and here you're gonna input the current number of sales that you have. So let's say you have 50 sales, yeah? Um, how do you find out how many sales a product has had? Well, you can find that in your analytics. So go to analytics and then reports, and then you'll find it here. And you can search it, sales by product. Okay, total sales by product. And then make sure you're looking at the right time range okay so this is just the past month yeah um, you can go last 365 days remember last 12 months is from the previous month okay so it's not going to show the latest results my shopify store is only a couple of months old so last 365 days is perfect for me this will show the total number of sales okay but if your store is older then you want to use the calendar here to go to whichever year you launched your store, you know, so that you can get the total, the total amount of sales for each product. And then in your products, you can enter that here, but you can also go to your products page, click here, you know, bulk edit. Um, I don't want to go into this too much, but you can see your meta fields here. So open up your sales count and then you can do this sort of in bulk a little bit quicker across your entire store or if you have really a lot of products then you might need to automate this or you might need to export to excel or like google sheets right and do that there fill out all those meta fields there i don't want to go into that in this video so for the next step let's display this number on the actual website on the product page so in your theme customizer go to your product page and here let me just show you how simple it is um, if you wanted to, you could simply use a text block. And here in this text block, we can use the dynamic source button. And that sale count will come up here because it's just an integer, just a number. This is the text field and it will output that. So we've got 50 and then here you write sales. Yeah. Here you can actually highlight this, bold, change the, uh, change the style maybe like that. You've got this really subtle one here. Right? So that's an easy way of doing it, but 
you know, I want something that stands out a little bit more, something that looks a little bit nicer. So I'm actually gonna use the, uh, the custom liquid block. For now, I'll put it above the title just so we can see what we're working on. And to access that meta field, all you need is product.metafields.custom. Remember that namespace and key? Sale underscore count, okay? And that will output 50. So now we need some HTML around this, right? So I recommend putting this inside a div. A div is just a division or just a block of content on a page. So that separates it. And then here we can, for example, put sales. We can wrap this in strong tags to make that number bold, like so. Right? Lots of things that we could do to it, uh, but at this point, you might want to copy and paste from my blog post. Um, whoops, that's actually... Guys, if you've been seeing this local host for 321, that's supposed to be ed.codes, okay? For you, you can find this blog post at this link, ed.codes slash blog slash sales counter for Shopify. All right, um, scroll down and you can just... You see here in this code, I've, I'm outputting this meta field here. And then all we've got here is just some styling for that design, okay? So copy all of this, paste that into here. Um, and there we go. If you're wondering what this is, that's the actual info icon SVG. That's why it's so random and unreadable but the rest of it is quite readable. If you wanna change the color of the icon, you would change that here. If you wanna change the color of the background panel, uh, you would change that here. You might also want to change the width. Right now I have it set to the max width of the buttons in Dawn and in Dawn based themes, uh, 44 rem. But uh, in your theme, if you're not using one of the free Shopify themes, it might be a little bit different, so you might want to change this number. So now that we're displaying um, our meta field and we've got it nicely designed, you can position it anywhere you want. Uh, I'm just going to save for now. And the final part would be to automate this number, right? We want this to go up anytime this product gets sold. Okay, so finally, let's set up the flow that's actually going to make this useful. Uh, so get Shopify flow if you don't already have it installed. Let's create a new workflow. Select a trigger and the trigger is simply going to be order created. You can search. I always recommend searching order created. When an order is created, we want to do something. We want to perform an action and that action is going to be loop over every item in the order, okay? So there's something called a for each loop. You can just search for it again like this. So for each loop, it's gonna loop over each item in a list. Our list currently is in an order. You have a list of products that were ordered, right? So it's gonna loop or go over each one of those products and then do something for each one of those products, right? So first of all, let's select the list that it's going over. The list will be the products in the order, which in Shopify, they use a special term for that. It's line items. When you add something to the cart, every product is on a separate line, right? So line items. So for every line, we're gonna do this, do this for each item, another action. And what we're gonna do is update a meta field, okay? not update shop meta field, update a product meta field. Okay, that meta field we set up, it is a, a product meta field. In fact, let's open up our meta fields just quickly. So remember custom data, products, it's a product meta field, right? Sale count, and we've got the namespace and key, yeah? So we wanna update that meta field. So the namespace is custom, the key is sale underscore count, the type, first of all, the type is, is a number, an integer. And then the value. What do we want the value to be? So here currently the value is 50, right? And if this product is purchased, we want the value to go up to 51. So what we actually need to do is get the current value and then plus one. Does that make sense? So 
let's get the current value by clicking add a variable we're going to look for that meta field on that product on that particular product so that product is the line item as i explained before so we're going through every item in the order and for that item we're going to look into the product look into the product and then look into the products meta fields right except not meta fields but just meta field and which meta field is it well it's the it's that one that we just set up custom sale count we're trying to get that value so you'll find it here and that will create an alias sale count don't be surprised if later this is grayed out if you for some reason go back into here if you go back a step this will be grayed out because you already created an, an, an alias so add that and now this will appear on the fields with arguments okay sale count and here you select value so we just want the value of that meta field now you'll be back at this screen and you'll have this being output here notice it's different from what we're outputting um, here it's totally different this is product meta fields custom sale count it's quite simple uh, here it's for the order right so it's a little bit different and it uses the alias but anyway what we're getting here now is 50 so in other words when an order is created we're updating it with the number it already is uh, so we want it plus one in some way and that's pretty easy to do with liquid filters use the pipe symbol here it's uh, the same key as backslash and we're going to do plus one like so that's how you do maths in liquid okay so that's about it you can close this now and you can turn on the workflow and actually give it a better name sale counter the workflow is turned on and that should be it now we can test if we've done everything correctly so you can simply make a test order on your store add to cart check out you need to have bogus payments activated if you're using shopify payments and when you have that bogus payment method you can use the card number one security code 111 expiration date anytime in the future and yeah any name that should be it and now let's go back to the flow we created refresh and you should see that it has run it has completed right it updated a meta field excellent succeeded and when we go back to this product page let's refresh here we should see 51 sales no okay <laughs> you see i just had to refresh two times it didn't show up right away but there we go 51 sales and of course when we look at that product page we will see that the meta field has been updated here with the number 51 and that is all for today guys if you enjoyed my teaching style if you found this video easy to understand then you might also like my ebook so check that out on shop.ed.codes and please also leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already best of luck and i'll see you next time